Hello, welcome to the course on Information Systems for Managers here on Anu's Classroom. In this video, we'll be talking about Information System Economics and Security. The whole concept actually begins with valuing the growing need for information. And we will be revealing the relationships between data and information and knowledge. Um, definitely, I hope that since you are right now in the second semester, which is where this um, course is part of, you will be familiar with concepts like cost and value and things like that. So cost and value also applies to information as well as ethics also in, uh, applies to information. There are, uh, and we are all aware about the right to information and how uh, there are rules and regulations to protect our information systems. Mm, so in this video or in this, uh, what you can say, in this session, we will portray the main reasons for the success as well as failures of uh, what you can say, management information systems. So by the end of this session, I hope that you will be able to appreciate the growing need for information. What is data, information and knowledge? What is the value and cost of information? What are ethics and rights to information? And how we can deal with protection as well as disaster recovery. So let's get started. Why exactly do we need information? Information helps in avoiding the duplication of research. Right? If somebody has already done the research and they have, uh, what you can say, they have already invented the wheel and we know about it means we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right? So that is what happens with information. It simulates the thought process of users, particularly scholars, and it helps scientists, engineers, scholars, and all to get well-informed current advancements in their subjects and to keep them up to date. Information students receive through textbooks will help them gain knowledge, and um, videos like ours also will help you in gaining knowledge. Information technology, or IT, involves the study and application of computers and any type of telecommunications that store, retrieve, study, transmit, or manipulate data and send information. So, data, information, knowledge, wisdom. Almost these words, we uh, colloquially use them interchangeably, but are they exactly the same? The symbols, facts, statistics, all those things which are collected together for reference of or for analysis is what we call data. The raw facts and figures, the numbers, the letters, the special characters, the charts, those things are data. Data have been, that have been put into a meaningful and useful context and communicated to the recipient who, you, who would be the intended user of it will be called information. So to be useful, our information, it should be accurate, it should be complete, economical, flexible, reliable and verifiable. It should be relevant, simple, timely, accessible as well as secure. Data, so we can say that data is once processed will become information and that information is what makes a person knowledgeable and our knowledge is what creates our wisdom or adds to our wisdom. So the entire data life cycle goes like this. First, data gets generated. Once a data is generated, we have two options. We can either process it or destroy it. Some data we ignore it. That means we immediately destroy it. Some data we keep in our mind to process. Like for example, if somebody makes a comment on you, you can have two options. Either ignore them or brood over it. Right? What do we usually do? We brood over it. That is the process. So once you process, you can either store it to use it later, like uh, in the night, instead of sleeping, you can use the comments that uh, somebody had passed some time back to brood over it and lose your sleep. Okay? So you can store it in your mind or come, uh, make it come back as your dreams right and retrieve it whenever we need once we retrieve it we check whether it can be used for future use or not if it can be used for future use then we'll store it back or we will destroy it now how do we evaluate for future use we may sort it manipulate it synthesize it right and we'll utilize it and once we utilize it again we'll see whether after utilization is this data or this information valuable to be kept for future use like for example, oh, that guy had commented on me like this. Okay, so next time I'll better stay away from that person. Or oh my god, that auntie is always gossiping. I'll make sure that next time when I go to a wedding, I don't sit next to her, right? That is what. So I need to keep her mind or her, sorry, her face or her voice in my mind, right? Otherwise, I will end up sitting next to the same auntie in my next wedding also. So if I see that that processed information is useful for future, then I will again store it and whenever required, I'll retrieve it. If it is not useful after utilizing, 
for further use, then I will destroy it. That is, I will be forgetting it. There are umpteen number of things that we forget, right? Like the number of the bus that we got into for going from place A to place B yesterday. We might not remember it. Or the number of the taxi that we bought. Some people do. Some people remember it. I don't. Right? So we destroy it. So that is the whole life cycle of data. So what is the value and cost of information? For using information to its advantage, organizations develop an information system. However, before developing the system, a cost-benefit analysis will be done to figure out the net benefit that is that we hope to achieve from that particular system. So the value of information is actually measured in terms of the benefits it can give to the organization. The benefits may be tangible, as in they can be easily quantified. Maybe it can directly help in getting a new deal or maybe increasing your profit or sales, something like that, or even lead to a loss. Sometimes the benefits may not be as tangible. It might be intangible and cannot be easily quantified, like how satisfied your, your consumers are or even your employees are, whether your attrition rate may slow down or not, all those things, right? How motivated they are. Some things like that are not easily tangible or easily quantifiable. While using information system, everyone is supposed to follow ethics to refrain from committing crimes by unauthorized use as unethical use could be devastating. To control such unauthorized use, countries have predefined rules to be followed mandatorily. India being a leader in IT industry, it has the IT Act which came up in the year of 2000. It is widely known as the IT Act of 2000 and many further amendments have been made into this IT Act for better control. With the increase in use of IT, whenever it was felt necessary, the Government of India has issued guidelines through modifications in the IT Act. In February 2021 also, the IT rules, uh, IT rules 2000 and 2011 were modified and intermediary guidelines and digital media ethics codes were notified. So as we all know, these days there are multiple platforms through multiple platforms like advertisements or uh, community awareness programs and all uh, the government officials and police officers and everybody through twitter also they uh, even through the twitter and social media also they are trying to make us aware of the ethics as well as the rules and regulations we should uh, be aware of while we are using uh, it that is information systems right uh, what is right what is wrong what could get you in trouble uh, do not share your otp do not share your personal information to people whom you don't know on social media uh, and how people are hacking stuff, how you should be careful, all those kinds of things, right? So that is all part of this IT Act itself. That is ethics in information systems. Same is the case with the right to information. Uh, sometime back, Government of India uh, launched its Right to Information Act, wherein any, any process or anything, if you want to get information about it, you can write, submit a right to information letter and they, uh, the officers, uh, government officers uh, and all, all the officers, they are bound to give you information about what you asked for, right? So that is right to information. Privacy is an important social issue involved in information society. It deals with the collection and use or even misuse of data. Customer data is constantly being collected and stored also. This data is often distributed, sold or used without our knowledge. The fundamental question is actually who owns the data and information? With the Right to Information Act which came up in 2005, Government of India has empowered citizens by giving right to be informed about the activities of the government as informed citizen is better equipped to keep necessary vigil on governance. Sometime back, just like how this Right to Information Act began, um, people have uh, had started suspecting like we, we used to get these promotional messages and spam calls and we were like, how the heck did you get my number and um, it, uh, sometimes it would be traced to a raffle coupon you might have entered into a supermarket wherein they might have sold your name and your number and all to a third party person for cash right lots of scandals and things like that had come up even other cards were found to be misused other card photocopies fan card photocopies and all were found to be misused there are there are a lot of movies also that have come up uh, which uh, showcases the traps that people fall into without even knowing that they are in a trap. God knows how many people including me have already fell into the trap. Because uh, almost everywhere you go they ask for your Aadhaar copy right. And that is the reason why nowadays there are multiple different types of Aadhaars also. One where your Aadhaar number is actually only the last four digits of your Aadhaar number is hidden and things like that also are there. 
so all these things all these measures are being taken care of as part of the right to information and uh, in order to protect our data privacy but anyways even with all these things the crimes that are related to computer resources and ip system social media and all those things are on the rise we all know crimes that involve illegal system access use of computer services network smart devices which are used over the internet and all has increased hackers make use of this knowledge to gain access to other systems as well an intruder may alter the data or destroy the data or even may have full control of the systems making them unusable and useless just by writing a small program to have control over such intrusions and malpractices organizations have used various methods like the use of biometrics apart from user id and password one time passwords and all even for me why uh, once upon a time um, uh, our computer our laptop uh, did get uh, you know affected by ransomware i am not sure from where but most probably it had something to do with bittorrent <laughs> not sure mm, uh, you know there are a lot of uh, sites on the internet maybe you don't even have to download a particular file to do that you just visit a link and maybe internally it might uh, download some softwares and things like that you click on a link and it did happen to me my computer or laptop did get infected and all our files uh, one fine morning we opened the laptop to watch something and we find out that the entire uh, laptop files and everything has been encrypted thankfully for us we did not have any uh, you know crucial data or things like that and uh, it was actually i guess a ransomware or something ransomware attack and uh, they were asking for money that you have to pay us some 3000 dollars or something in if you want to decrypt all those files back mm. since there was nothing uh, crucial over there it was just a personal laptop and we used to use it for maybe browsing hotstar or youtube and things like that maybe small word processing and all nothing happened we cleared out the hard disk and we had to reboot it but that also cost money we had to go to the computer center and get it done that is the end of it but um, yeah so these kind of things happen and we need to protect our computer servers we didn't have a so anti virus or things like that um, at that time but after that we did invest on an anti virus so information system actually performs key functions for an organization if for some reason the system becomes non functional for some time the consequences actually may be unacceptable so in our case when our device got attacked thankfully since it was a personal stuff and nothing much was there we were safe but think about what would happen if that same thing happened in an organization or in your work laptop it would be really nasty right or what if some some something happened some natural disaster happened power went off your backups uh, maybe you just had one backup server and that f failed what would happen that that consequences may not be as acceptable as a small personal case right so organizations also usually have a set of emergency procedures for critical functions in the best scenario the end user may not will not be able to discover the failure of regular system threats to system could be power failure data corruption storage failure network failure nature threats in the form of fire flood or earthquake in addition labor unrest or human errors may also render the system unusable one of the first stops of disaster planning is to identify threats and after identifying the threats appropriate disaster recovery plans for computer resources can be implemented so how do we protect our computers and how do we create these disaster recovery plans you might have heard of the plan uh, of the term business continuity plans if you have worked in any organization of a sizable amount okay a sizable scale then definitely you would have come across this word if not um, definitely if you join an organization which is any organization um, it need not be a very huge firm also every firm will have a business continuity plan as to what should they do in order to make sure that their businesses run smooth in case of a failure or in case of some um, some unforeseen uh, or unavoidable circumstances a lot of uh, companies which had business continuity plans are what thrived our covid era also like if you have noticed our it industry was the first to adopt um, work from home policies by giving uh, sending out people uh, laptops uh, to work from home right so that was their business continuity plans it did take uh, like maybe few within few weeks or months i would say within a month or two almost all it firms were able to switch to their work from home models without impacting their work in fact it, uh, they were so quick in their business continuity plans that they were actually able to get back on productivity and even boost their productivity 
so that is the importance of business continuity plans and every business should have such business continuity plans if not and if an adverse situation arises we are bound to be the losers so what are the few dis uh, computer protection and disaster recovery plans that usually uh, um, businesses or everybody should actually aim for is hardware protection and backup software protection and backup virus protections for macro virus or boot sector virus trojan horses overwrite viruses browser hijackers web scripting polymorphic viruses resident virus multi-parted virus space filler virus umpteen number of viruses available in the it sector right now and more and more viruses are being born every minute as we talk also so uh, it is not possible to safeguard against all the viruses that are there in the world because most of them we may not even know but whatever we know of and whatever we may suspect um, we will have to take uh, adequate measures of and as well as educate our employees also on the safe practices uh, to be done so if you have uh, been with me so far if you have made it thank you so much for your time and i hope to see you in the next session